So hello everybody and welcome back to another film. This week I want to discuss the last film that I, I, I put out and the images that I displayed on that film. What's happened since I put the YouTube film out is that I've had a lot of comments back, a lot of feedback and some of the images that I really loved, some of you didn't. Um, not, not particularly didn't love, that's probably a bit strong, but some of you have preferences to the images that I didn't consider to be that good. And uh, that's been really interesting. It just goes to show that, that um, beauty certainly is in the eye of the beholder. So I want to look back at not the first um, trip that I, sorry, the first outing that I had in the Cairngorms, but the second one, the second film that I put out where there was, I think there was three images in total. Um, so I'm going to start with the reflected trees, which a lot of you liked, um, and that's at Youth Lock. And so let's put that on now and I'll just quickly go through um, the images in a sequence. So this is Ewarth Lochan and this particular scene I've been trying to photograph for many many years and the conditions on that particular day were absolutely perfect. Now I have to say that when I did my piece to camera by the time that I'd finished doing my spoken piece the rain had started but this image was taken a little while earlier. It's a lovely lovely shot. Um, I was talking about breaking the rules on the film and by that I meant the rule of thirds and someone rightly pointed out that symmetry is also a rule so there you go. What I love about this picture is that lovely yellow line of grasses um, and the, ref the reflections are absolutely, absolutely beautiful and a lot of you really like this shot and some of you actually like this more than any other shot in the whole film and that really surprised me, um, it really did. Whether it's because I've been going to this location for many, many years and I'm just used to seeing it, I don't know. But a lot of you certainly like this above all the images for the rest of the film. And yeah, that, that completely surprised me. But one of the things that I really struggle with on this image, and it, it probably didn't show too well on the film, is that in the shadow areas um, all around the image, particularly on the top part of the frame, it looks extremely grainy. And you can probably see that now when you blow the image up to 100% it looks absolutely fine but all the time that really niggles at me and that I just can't stop thinking about looking into those dark areas and why why it looks like that like I say 100% and I'm sure it will print fine it, it looks absolutely beautiful beautifully smooth and uh, certainly no grain that I can see but for whatever reason when it when the when the image is made smaller those dark shadow areas to my eye look absolutely awful but uh, you know, compositionally I really like it beautiful reflections you've got sort of a similar group of pine trees on the right to the one on the left so the image is actually split both ways you've got a central dividing line and uh, you've got the, the dividing line that runs across the middle from left to right so uh, it's a nice pleasing image but it wasn't my favorite from the day going on to the second shot that I took uh, was this one here now this is really interesting because when I arrived at this woodland four days later as you know the light was very very poor and I knew I was up against it but I committed I only had a small weather window and I was determined to get something to conclude the rest of the film that I started earlier on in the week. This was the scene I settled on and I think I saved a bit of the, the day by doing a little piece about nodal rail use and that was very very useful to show and I know a lot of you appreciated that. But in terms of the image, if you recall on the on the film, I didn't show it for very long. I didn't make a big deal about, about it. I didn't show it close up. I didn't move it around the screen. I just flashed it on very quickly as I walked onto the next shot. And that speaks volumes. It means I'm really disappointed with it. And, and the, the main reason I'm disappointed with it is because there is no light. I generally am happy to do dodging and burning and use radials and, and vignettes, but if there's no if there's no light to begin with there's nothing to work with I'm not going to start dodging and burning where there is nothing to start with I generally look at the scene and look for natural pools of light and work with those because that way you know you're not introducing anything false everything that you're working with was there and it's never going to look like it was made to look good at the end so this was the best that I could get from this particular shot I wanted this lovely dark moody sort of forest backdrop but the light just didn't create that on the day. Now interestingly on the video before um, it was back at Lock Inch and it was it was one where I'd been challenged by a Canadian chap, not challenged personally but he, he'd said something to me about packing up it was getting too late 
and uh, I wanted to sort of prove to myself if, that, that it's never too late to take a nice image. And right at the end of the evening I came across this scene and what, what the reason I'm showing you this is because this has got something that the, that the panoramic you've just seen doesn't have and that is much more contrast and that's why I was able to make an image in similarly flat light um, but this one works where the other one doesn't and the contrast by that I mean certainly the pine trunks if you look how beautifully light they are they're very similar to the one on the other scene but there's much more of them so you've got this um, much more interest that's taking your eye through the scene as the contrasted parts of the image work the way through from the foreground to the background but not only that if you look at the bilberry in the foreground just at the bottom here it also takes you on this natural pathway that contrasts with the with the heather the ling that that sits on the left hand corner there and also that runs through the central part of the frame so you've got a nice contrasting color that runs from from right to left whereas the other image didn't have any of that and that's why this particular shot in in very similar circumstances in very very flat light works and the other one doesn't so while flat light is very very good for photography you've still got to make sure that you've got lots of contrast to be able to work with to take your eye visually through the the necessary elements to, for, the, for the image to work so going back to the second day this shot really surprised me um, I knew that we had the flat light but what I didn't really notice on on the day when I was there that there were actually some pools of light breaking onto the forest floor. They were very, very subtle, but they were enough um, for me to just do a bit of subtle dodging and burning and use some radial filters just to bring out the brighter parts of the image. And interestingly, some radial filters that I have done, if you look at the birch on the right, you've got the two um, fans of branches on the, the lower third there. I've used two radial filters just to sort of bring out the brighter parts of those and similarly on the on the, the, the tree that's leaning over to the to the left hand side I've used radial filters on those branches too just to sort of pick them out and make them look a little bit more um, obvious and so that the whole thing stands out from the surrounding backgrounds but I think what what makes the whole thing for this particular image work is the fact that you've got those nice pools of light just sitting on those hummocks of, of grassland and, and sphagnum mosses that that uh, are all around the forest floor. Now, I didn't think it was gonna be a fantastic image on the day, but this has been a real nice surprise to me. A lot of you really like this shot. Um, and again, a lot of people prefer this shot over any of the others. But for me, it's, uh, it, was a real, it was a real surprise. Like I say, I, was, I wasn't expecting to do anything with it, but it may well just sit as one of my favorite, favorite shots, um, certainly for, for a long while. Um, and it's nice sometimes when you're not expecting great things from an image and, and by the time you've, you've processed it and you've brought the best out of it it really turns out to be quite a successful shot so yeah like I say I'm really happy with it and um, I, I don't I, I said on the day that it was something that I would come back to I think on reflection now if I never got back to this scene I think I'd be more than happy with what I've got so the third image which was my real surprise of the day. Now this is the shot that I like without question above everything else. Um, I think over 30 years I've seen a lot of photographs and it, it, it really does take a special photograph to make me sit up and take notice. And, and I don't say that lightly, it really does. And that includes my own images. Now this particular shot, um, it may well go down as one of my all time greatest shots um, looking back on everything I've ever taken. I absolutely love this. Someone on Instagram, thank you very much Gareth, said it reminded um, him of a Jackson Pollock um, image and if you've not looked at Jackson Pollock's work it's very very chaotic, um, very abstract and beautiful to look at and that was the ultimate compliment for, the, for this scene but I was so pleased when I got home and, and looked at this for the first time. I have to say that the the oak moss lichen that's adorning all the branches was a little bit more green than it is now and what I, what I did when I saw this I just felt that contrast was not something that this shot needed. It had plenty contrast in the birch bark and what I wanted to do was to sort of bring all the contrast into, into line with each other so it wasn't 
um, sort of in your face so I was trying to reduce the amount of contrast in the scene so I did that by reducing the colour uh, I wanted to reduce the colour of the greens to make them more in line with, with all the surrounding uh, colours of the birches and the birch branches and that way it, it's, it becomes less chaotic and that seems really a strange thing to say for a shot like this because the whole thing is ultimately very very chaotic but by bringing those colours into a similar um, sort of tonal range with the, with, the, with the birch bark it really really works one of my all time greatest pictures um, as far as I'm concerned but like I say the weird thing is is that some people still preferred that first shot with the reflected pine trees on your flock and some people pre preferred um, the three trees leaning over with the one leaning over no one which is no surprise liked the one of the uh, the panoramic with the with the, um, the woodland but like I said I didn't dwell on that and I really didn't expect anybody to like that's why I moved on very very quickly but I'm so pleased with this which brings me on to the last part of this film so before I go I just want to quickly talk about prints those of you that have been on my website will have seen that generally speaking I only sell very very large prints and that's because on the whole the people that have asked for them have wanted them for large spaces but since YouTube has started to gather, to gather traction I'm getting more and more demand for smaller moderate sized prints so with that in mind I've started what I've called the cottage collection now that collection is going to only have my very very favorite and treasured images and, and I'm not going to display anymore they're all the pictures that are very very special to me but as we've just found out we've just been talking about <laughs> what, I, what I consider to be beauty in my eye isn't, isn't necessarily beauty in everybody else's eyes so if there's anything not on there that you really would like please do get in touch so the prints generally come with all the usual stuff that you get with a limited edition so they've got limited in number they come with a certificate of authenticity and they come with an artist statement now the artist statement is only available to you when you buy the print it's not available to anybody else but what i've also done in this instance is i've given you some guarantees in that the quality is is as good as it possibly can be and by that i i have what i've done is that all the prints that I do are now registered with Art Show. Now Art Show, I'm going to read this, Art Show is the Fine Art, Fine Art Trade Guild for Giclé prints. I'm not sure you say Giclé, Giclé. I say Giclé because it sounds French, it sounds nicer, but some people say Giclé or Gicli. But, uh, but anyway, Giclé prints, the Fine Art, Trade for, Fine Art Trade Guild for Giclé prints. All the prints that I sell are all registered with them. And what that ensures for you as the buyer, it means that the prints um, have met certain standards so the printer um, the inks and the paper all have to be a certain certain quality paper has to be a certain weight before it can be accepted by the fine art trade guild for Giclé prints so there you go that's a little bit of extra and when you buy a print you also get a certificate from them to show that it's been approved so hop over to the website have a look and if there's anything you fancy please do make a purchase I'd be very much uh, appreciative of that so I'm gonna leave it there next time you see me I'll be out and about um, I have no idea where but I'm certainly looking forward to getting out I've been in for a couple of weeks now and I'm starting to climb the walls so I will say thank you all so much for watching as always it's been a pleasure so until next time bye for now